scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The arch enemy of Satan is man. He does not steal and kill and destroy from God. Are we together now? Yes. There is no mention in the word of Satan attacking the word but when the word became flesh and he became a man Satan now followed him and attacked him until the wisdom of God led Satan to look like he killed him only for him to resurrect in victory are you seeing that now so Satan alongside demons and unclean spirits make up the satanic kingdom please look up some of you may be asking now, where do men, human vessels come in? Because I'm sure that most of you are waiting anxiously for me to talk about the issue of witches and wizards and you are wondering why I didn't include them in that list. Now, let me tell you this. Every human vessel, every human vessel that Satan walks through to execute his purposes, listen carefully, every human vessel that Satan uses is the same vessel intended to bring the glory, to reveal the glory of God. Are we together now? The very nature of operating on earth here is such that you cannot operate on earth legitimately without a human participation. So the idea of man in partnership with the Holy Spirit is not Satan's idea. It is God's idea the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he, that Lord, given to the sons of men. Are we together now? Very, very important. So when you are defining the satanic kingdom, you don't necessarily bring men. Men were not created by Satan. They are God's creation and for his glory. He only took advantage of them because of ignorance and in compliance with the law of territory. Is someone understanding this now? What is the assignment of the demonic kingdom, corporately speaking? We know that Satan has a personal assignment ultimately to gain dominion and to bring transgenerational allegiance. But as a demonic structure, what exactly is their assignment? Write this down. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. That's it. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. This is the corporate motto and the corporate assignment of the demonic kingdom. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any and all means. To fight and frustrate the purposes of God by all means. Please look up. When we say the purposes of God, what are we talking about? Number one, coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The first assignment of Satan in order of priority is to stop everybody who is on earth, if possible, from coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is plan A. If plan A does not work and you now give your life to Christ, the next assignment is to frustrate your efficiency in terms of your growth, and your efficiency in serving the purposes of God. Is it, is it clear enough now? Everywhere you see Satan, everywhere you see demons, 
everywhere you see evil men in partnership with these spirits this is their corporate mandate to fight and to frustrate the purposes of god and in order of priority satan's plan a is to make sure that they do not come into the knowledge because the bible says in john 17 and verse 3 it says and this is eternal life that they may know thee the one through god john 17 3 this is eternal life he says that they may know you the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent are we together now what is eternal life the knowledge of jesus eternal life is not just responding to an altar call that through the preaching of the gospel i am not ashamed of the gospel he says for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes everyone satan and the satanic kingdom corporately speaking have a singular assignment to fight and to frustrate the purposes of god by any and all means the key phrase here is any and all means sickness is part of the any and all means agenda please look up delay any and all means agenda causes everything you call destruction or the expressions of his wickedness is part of that any and all means agenda if satan can use an accident he will use it if he can use a plane crash he can he will use it if he can use your dying he will use it if he can use your being sick he will use it anything at all that will achieve that purpose he will use it any and all means is an attempt to describe the extent of his determination and desperation can i tell you this when you want to study desperation study satan a man who is already aware of his eminent defeat and yet in that imminent defeat he makes up his mind without fail that he will keep fighting i hope you know that it's not only christians that study the bible when satan came to jesus at least we know how jesus learned scripture in the flesh he went to the temple to study so how did satan learn his own all through scripture everybody who understood scripture understood it by study if man understood scripture he understood by study even the word of god understood scripture as a human vessel by study so how do you think satan knew what was written the only way to be approved is to study. Is that true? Satan, alongside demons and evil spirits, make up the satanic kingdom. And then they have a singular assignment to fight and frustrate the purposes of God by any means. We conclude from these scriptures that satan has an operational system now i want to teach you we have looked a bit at the structure i don't want to go into the details hopefully in another teaching that relates to this we'll look at what principalities and powers and rulers are but all of these things just define three things listen in understanding maybe i should just put a word or two in understanding the structure of satan the structure of Satan is defined according to three things. Number one, geography. Number two, functions. Please understand this. Geography means location. There are spirits that reside in heavenly places. That is their jurisdiction. There are spirits that reside in specific geographic regions. For instance, Gadara, do not cast us out of this region. Are we together now so in structuring the satanic kingdom satan use a number of factors number one is geography the bible shows us that these demons themselves they honor geography number two functions for instance you can read in your bible certain spirits called the spirit of death a lying spirit the spirit of infirmity 
when we're dealing with deliverance proper you will be learning that one of the ways we administer scriptural deliverance is not necessarily by knowing the name of every demon you can identify them by the operation are we together now yes In fact, the Bible tells us one time when Jesus came and met an epileptic patient and the disciples were trying to cast out that demon and nothing happened. The Bible says he rebuked the deaf and dumb spirit. And then number three, I gave you two. Number three, ranking. There are ranks. There are ranks, not only for angels, but there are ranks even for demon spirits. An example of that we see is in Mark chapter 5. We're coming there. When Jesus met the madman in Gadara, and he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion, for we are many. So there was a Legion, but it was not a Legion that spoke. There was one person who spoke on behalf of, of that legion do you agree that there is ranking number two jesus himself was speaking about deliverance and he said when a spirit leaves a man he says it goes through dry regions is that true sourcing for a place of rest not finding any the bible says it will say let me go back to my house and it will go back to his house who is the house now the human vessel or any material vessel and he will find it swept and clean and the Bible says that spirit will go back and bring seven others greater than it. So there is ranking, classification, the structure of the demonic kingdom. Let me recap again. Number one is based on geography. Geography. There is the prince of Persia. The Bible identifies him with that geography. And then number two, based on what? Function infirmity sickness conditions and so on and so forth and then number three based on ranking let's go to the operational system I'm, I'm interested in this now the operational system we're looking at the structure and the operation of satan and the demonic kingdom now we're looking at the operational system Please look up. Every organization and indeed every kingdom has a modus operandi. That means they have a way that they operate. Are we in agreement with that? It is important to know how Satan operates. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Please, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that no spirit would distract you while you are listening to me. Because for some of you, you are going to be, God is going to be opening up to you. It is no mystery how Satan operates. The word of God in black and white, very clear terms, reveals to us how Satan operates. Two scriptures, Ephesians 6, 11. Does Satan have an operational system? Yes, sir. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. The word wiles there is the word schemes or devices, the wiles of the devil schemes of the devil so satan does not just attack there is a system there is a game plan there is a destruction plan he does not just stand up and move around and say how do i destroy this family there is a plan second corinthians chapter 2 and verse 11 let's read together if you can see it projected one to read let satan should gain an advantage of us uh-huh for we are not ignorant of his devices 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 strategies now please play very close attention let's identify from scripture some of the things that satan and demons are involved with we are looking from the lens of scripture now we want to examine a few activities of satan and demon spirits 
the activities help us reveal the structure are we together i mean the the operation now when you look at what satan does you also find in what he does how he does it are we learning i'll be giving you a few scriptures number one satan and demons fight write it down the bible shows us that satan and even demon spirits that they fight revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought. And the Bible says the dragon fought and his angels fought. So it is part of Satan's character and it is part of Satan's modus operandi to fight. Two, Satan hinders or he resists. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 18. Satan resists, demons resist. He says, wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Who hindered them? Satan, a spirit, can hinder men. If Satan can hinder an apostle, it means he can try to hinder breakthrough, he can try to hinder lifting anything that is coming to you for your advantage it is possible for satan to try to hinder it number three satan and demons also they steal they kill and they destroy john 10 10 everything that applies to satan also applies to demon spirits satan and indeed demon spirits kill they steal they kill and they destroy john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal most serious armed robbers go in groups are we together when they want to rob say a bank you don't find an individual no matter how strong it's usually a coordinated activity the bible says he Cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So Satan steals. What does he steal? Anything at all. What does he kill? Everyone and everything. Next activity that reveals the modus operandi of Satan. Are you ready? Satan and demons lie. Start that one. John, okay, let me give you one more scripture about stealing, killing, and destroying. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 19. Please write it down. Matthew 13 and verse 19. The Bible lets us know that Satan is a thief. Jesus was teaching this in the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, he says, then cometh the wicked one, another word for Satan, and catcheth away that which, which was sown in his heart. Can you imagine how Satan steals? He can steal and even enter your heart. Your heart that a doctor needs to use knife to open it. Satan can enter and steal. Or your spirit or whatever it is. He can steal anything. No wonder he can put a disease in your body without surgery. No wonder he can put anything there and he can carry something that was good. But in the name of Jesus Christ, he's finally meeting his resistance forever. Yeah. Next point. Satan and demons lie. John 8, 44. Satan, by his consistency of lying, earned himself a title that Jesus himself acknowledged as the father of You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, the lust of your father, ye will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he is in his default state. That means when Satan feels a lie, there's no point feeling guilty. That's who he is. 
There are Yoruba people who speak Yoruba and English and Hausa and other tribes. But when you are speaking your local dialect, you speak it with confidence and joy. Here's what the Bible is telling you. You ever doubted Satan's language? What tribe is he? That's it right there. The Bible says that Satan, when he speaketh a lie, Jesus is talking now. He speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. The word father there is the same word that is used towards God. Abba, an originator and a defender of a cause. That means you, it came from you and you guard it to make sure it remains. Ah. <laughs> the father of lies. I told you to start that one. You will soon know why. Next point, very quickly. Satan is a master of falsehood. He disguises himself. He uses the strategy of disguise or falsehood. The strategy of disguise or falsehood. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 14. Satan disguises himself. Are you ready? And no marvel, he says, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. One of the strategies of Satan is that he can use the tool of falsehood. He can disguise himself. Next, Satan deceives. Start that one, please. Satan deceives. We're studying the modus operandi of Satan. Satan deceives. Second Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are you learning tonight? But I fear, lest by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve, the word there is deceived. He beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know what Paul is saying? Paul is saying that Satan employed a strategy and deceived Eve. You know I taught you that um, Adam was not deceived. Adam fell because of love. It was Eve that was deceived. Are we together? Absolutely, it's in your Bible. We're going to read that. There is, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that fell. Eve was deceived. And Adam followed her because he loved her. The second Adam, who is Jesus, was he deceived? He came willingly because he loved his Eve, the church. The same pattern, you see. So Adam, Adam was not deceived. It was Eve that was deceived. No, 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 it doesn't listen. Listen. This I, I already know. I know what is in your heart. And okay, let me show you. First Timothy 2, 2 and verse 14. If you think First Timothy 2 14. 14. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Women fall because of deception. Men fall because of love. So next time you say you are falling in love, ask yourself, must you fall? <laughs> the in love is not the issue. It's the fact that must you... <laughs> Let's get back to our discussion. We're discussing something very serious tonight. I reject distraction in Jesus' name. <laughs> Satan deceives. He's a master deceiver. Are we learning? Revelations 12 and verse 9. One last scripture that talks about 
the extent of his deception and the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and satan which deceived the whole world can you imagine that he deceives the finally we see from scripture that satan is an accuser the bible calls him the accuser of the brethren he does not just accuse anyhow he looks for brethren the accuser of the brethren We're identifying some of the activities of Satan and demons to be able to help us to piece out by the intelligence of the spirit a modus operandi, a structure. Now please write this. Of all the strategies and operations of Satan, of all the strategies and the operations of Satan, the most pronounced in the Bible is deception of all the strategies and operations of satan the most pronounced in the bible is deception can you imagine that that of the many strategies that we see that satan deploys the most pronounced based on scripture is deception please say deception one more time say deception write this down what does it mean to deceive we are now building an understanding on the operation of satan demons and the dark kingdom what does it mean to deceive are you ready to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma usually for personal gain or to take advantage of i'll take it again to deceive means to deliberately underline the word deliberately please to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is not true comma usually for personal gain or to take advantage of we are defining deception now that to deceive means to deliberately cause someone to believe something that is a lie it's not true for your personal gain the gain of the deceiver or so that the deceiver can take advantage of the deceived of all the operations of Satan, the most pronounced according to scripture is deception. That means he is a master. He has mastered the art of making people believe what is a lie. And by causing them to believe it, he can take advantage of them. Lest Satan should take advantage of us because we are not ignorant that he is a deceiver and that the only way he takes advantage of believers is when he brings you to a point where you believe and are convicted in something that is not true powerful write this down are you learning deception which is the same thing as falsehood i want to define it for you now deception which is the same thing as falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea i'll take it again deception which is the same thing as falsehood deception is a statement or action is a statement or action that is intended to mislead comma hide the truth comma or promote a false belief or idea 
That's the definition of deception. A statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, or promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. You may want to add this. It is often done for personal gain. Deception or falsehood is a statement or action that is intended to mislead, hide the truth, promote a false belief or idea. Full stop. It is often done for personal gain. Isn't this powerful? That the chiefest strategy of Satan as far as carrying out his agenda is in the midst of all of these activities that we, we listed from scripture that the greatest and the most pronounced is deception write this down please about deception very important point deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth wow deception cannot happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth it's impossible for deception to happen until the deceiver is aware of the truth because the assignment of the deceiver is to make the deceived to not understand or not receive the truth that means for you to be a deceiver the qualification to be a deceiver is that you must have access to the truth Deception cannot happen until the deceiver, in this case Satan, is aware of the truth. So is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is Lord? Is it true that, Jesus, that Satan knows that there is victory given to the saints? Is it true that he knows that there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved? Is it true that Satan knows that Jesus is now resurrected holding the keys of life? Is it true that Satan knows that Jesus gave us the authority over him? No wonder he does his ministry of deception so well. Because the basis of deception is that you must know the truth. Is someone learning now? It is impossible for a deceiver to be a deceiver in ignorance. Because a deceiver, the character of deception is that the very act of deception is done intentionally. Are we learning? Now, let's take a structured biblical study. I wanted to read a few scriptures that talk about deception, but we'll jump it for the sake of time. I want us to take one case study. We are studying now how Satan operates. Are you ready? We want to take one Bible story and then we'll examine it closely. And I taught you here that theologically speaking, there is what we call the law of first mention. That every time you want to study a subject, a thought, or an idea, your first assignment is to go to where it was first referenced in scripture and understand the contextual explanation or usage that becomes your interpretation everywhere that word or that thought is used is that true so we'll go to genesis but before then let's look at two or three scriptures john 8 44 john 8 44 let's start from where we left off jesus is speaking now and Jesus himself said a few things that are very interesting about the devil. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer when? He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth. Do you know what this means? Jesus did not say he was ignorant of the truth. He says he refused to abide, to live in the truth. He willfully came out of that realm of truth. He abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Keep that scripture. 2 Corinthians eleven 
3. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. But I fear, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. So Apostle Paul here is using a story to show us the deception of Satan. Are you seeing where Paul is leading us to now? Paul is saying, if you want to study the deception of Satan, study what happened with Satan and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Because he's saying Satan will still use that strategy against you. Are you seeing now? He's saying just as Satan beguiled Eve through subtlety, he will also come to you and do something to you the same way he worked with Eve. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying when it has to do with that strategy, it is his master strategy, he will not change it. You study Satan's operation by studying what happened between him and Eve. First Timothy 2 and verse 13, where you read and laughed, now I hope you don't laugh again because we're getting into a very serious discussion now. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Do we believe this? Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Journey with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go to the book of the beginnings and see what exactly happened there. Genesis chapter 3. Story, story. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman. Now when you read this, you will think it's just something that happened immediately in a matter of minutes. The Bible is written in summary. And so it does not give us the, the depth of the discussion because this is not just something that happened within minutes. I told you that in studying scripture, you have to use the mind of literature. You have to use the mind of a historian. You have to use the mind of an archaeologist. And then you have to use the understanding of a spiritual man. These are the four components you need to thoroughly study scripture. If all you have is the mind of a spiritual man, as powerful as that is, you will not really understand the Bible. Because the Bible has a literature component. The Bible has a historical component. The Bible has an archaeological component. And then it has largely a spiritual component. Are we learning? Now watch carefully, please. We are studying Satan now. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden. Now please listen carefully. Go back to verse 1. Do you know why Satan came to the woman directly to talk to her? It's not because she was female. Mm -mm. There was something about the structure of dominion. Are you getting the point now? That when God gave man dominion, in the Garden of Eden it was very clear that even though Adam and Eve are spirits, had dominion but based on that earthly structure within the family context in the garden adam and man was head over her are we together now and satan would not come directly and attack the head but he knew that there was a connection between adam and eve there was something he understood that he would not be able to easily deceive adam but he knew that based on that structure there is a connection between Adam and Eve and the connection is love. And that genuine love is love that comes with sacrifice. So he didn't need to deal with the man. He was not dealing with the man simply because he knew that once he got the woman, the love the man had for the woman would be why he would fall. So he didn't have to waste his time there. <laughs> Are you getting the idea now? That if I can get Eve, you will be seeing it. That when Eve ate, she gave her husband what you call eating now. For the sake of this discussion, we'll still keep it at that. Most people think she just ate and called him and said, Sweetheart, where are you? You will find out in the Bible he was standing right there with her. He fell because of love. 
the bible says satan came and met the woman now watch this notice the first thing his conversation with the woman yea had god said can you imagine the beginning of his discussion mentioned god satan look at the structure of his deception had god said that means i told you that deception cannot work until what is true is known are you seeing the pattern here now satan wanted all i need to know is what god told you that is the raw material for my fabricating my deception that means satan has no business coming to your life until god speaks the moment god speaks satan says now i have something to work with what did god tell you about your child what did god tell you about your destiny what did god tell you about your ministry deception is not possible until there is an awareness of the truth in this case what god said because everything god says is yea and amen let god be true and all men liars are we learning and he said unto the woman yea have god said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden of eden are you noticing that there's something with that statement he was doing something to the truth when i tell you truth can kill believe me it's not only a lie that kills he did something that forced her to defend what god said now the woman verse 2 the woman said satan you didn't get that right let me correct you this is what he said we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden and he was listening but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god had said ye shall not eat it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die satan said thank you now let me show you that i have an advantage of age over you verse 4 do not be ignorant of the devil's devices are we learning how satan operates now when satan comes to you the raw material for his attack is what god has said and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die are you seeing now verse do you know what he was doing to her here he was shaking the basis for her obedience that means now that i know what god has said i know that faith is obedience my next assignment is to do something to you for god doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as the gods knowing good and evil satan was saying god is so insecure there is something he's hiding from you and that is why he vetted out his insecurity by putting a strict rule don't mind him trust me there is something i know when you eat this your eyes will be opened and you will be like him knowing good and evil verse 6 when the woman saw everybody say when the woman saw The discussion started by saying but by the time we get to this point she has perceived so there does not just mean eyes she has conceived as a reality the woman did not fall by eating the fruit eating the fruit was proof she had fallen this was where the fall started perception don't think he just came to her one day and spoke to her no that's why I told you the Bible is written in summary. You, you need to use, you don't come like that in one day and convince someone. Go and read your Bible. The Bible spoke about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. How many times did she come to him? Frequently. J Judas Iscariot. It was not just once they met him and said, deceive, deceive Jesus. It's within the character of Satan to be consistent. 
The same way you don't come and most times you don't meet a woman once and say, marry me. And then you have to come again. That structure. Satan was patient and came. And he said, when the woman finally saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the that's not normal seeing my brothers and sisters mm -mm. there is a kind of seeing that had attacked her spirit are we together the bible says the tree to be desired look at all this look at these emotional expressions it's more than just seeing a tree she was always looking at the tree what did she now see the bible says she took off the fruit thereof and did eat maybe in another time as god helps us i will really explain to you what it really means the concept of the tree and the fruit but so that i don't disrupt the flow of what we're doing we'll just accept it as eating but you see the concept of eating and the tree these are these are prophetic expressions it may not necessarily mean tree and fruit but it does not interrupt our understanding even if we understand it that way so we'll continue the bible says she did eat please everybody read the remaining part and gave also unto her husband with her is it in your bible what did he do did he throw it she ate now watch what happened do you know that when she ate there was no effect it was when he ate that something happened because the sheep only scatters when you strike the shepherd she ate and she gave him ate from deception he ate from love in any case they ate that's the bottom line and then the bible says the moment that happened notice satan stopped talking to them it was over you thought that after eating you say now how do you feel that is the structure of deception now that he had achieved his goal he will now leave them with god and he says now off i go the bible says the eyes of them were open did he tell them something like that will happen absolutely he said your eye will open but they did not understand what he meant the bible says and they knew now notice what happened here there was already a disruption in the way god arranged the spirit of a man because the way god designed man was the spirit of a man was supposed to have the highest level of ascendance in direct touch with the spirit of god the body would barely be an instrument of execution are we together the mind that consists of the will the emotion and the intellect would midwife the spirit and the body these are just the platforms for the spirit to be able to operate with the body and now we see that something is wrong you can see that the soul came alive the eyes of them were open and they knew they were naked you see shame attributes of emotions they sowed fig leaves and made aprons they ran away god is about to speak and they heard the voice of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves everybody say fear they hid themselves from the presence of the lord should you run away from the presence of the lord but now we see something happening to them are you seeing the way satan works he did not have to keep talking the destruction can happen whether he's there or not it's a programming he has done something to them the same way satan can come and do something to a village and after 30 years it is still working whether he supervises or not it's like a software now he left these people the next time we hear him talking was in answer to a question god asked him left the woman deception and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam. Are you seeing how God respected his own structure? When he came, he never spoke to the woman until man gave him permission to speak to the woman. 
when he came he spoke to the man who had that seat of authority and dominion adam you are the one i put alongside your wife what has happened i look spiritually and i don't see you sitting on that throne of dominion again when he said adam where art thou god god speaks spiritually there was a position that you could see you could look down to the earth and know that the man in charge is seated there it is that same position that the demon said jesus i know paul i know when we look in the spirit we all those who have dominion we see that position where are you adam where are you you are lost adam who shifted you without pushing you who shifted you who who gained mastery over you and made you to move fear off you left the place of power and yet force was not used on you that is the power of deception I overcame Hallelujah He won the victory Hallelujah I overcame Hallelujah I overcame Hallelujah Listen are you see what satan did they thought it was just a conversation they did not understand the spiritual implication adam i checked the place of authority and you are not there where are you this is a tragedy that came upon men you need to learn this because he's coming and he will use the same thing remember the structure what did god say God did not mean what he would say and he will keep coming to you every day he knows that persistence is powerful Satan does not speak once let me tell you how he speaks he uses words he uses men he uses things he uses pain he's still the one speaking he will employ everything until he shifts you from that place there is a place where when you stand Adam now let me teach you something powerful for as long as man did not cooperate with satan satan looked powerless he was with them and could not touch them he was with them and could not touch them the power of satan is in your falling for his deception there was absolutely nothing he could do to adam and eve the best he could do was speak he had to depend on their seeing and their participating with his lies. And the Lord told him, Where are you? Verse 10. Here's what Adam said. I heard your voice in the garden, but I was afraid. Something has happened to me. I heard your voice clearly. I've not lost my hearing, but I've lost my position. I was afraid because I was naked. Do you know what that means? The glory and the Shekinah that covers me has left. Something has happened to me. And I hid myself. Because I know what it means to not be covered by your glory. Verse 11. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Every time God comes to rescue you, the first question is who told you? You have opened up your ears to another influence. That means in any case, whether you are restored or you are deceived, it is based on what you were told now understand the power of words no adam you've fallen who told you i'm tracing the root cause of your problem it came from information 
listen carefully dear father dear grandfather dear region where did this witchcraft come from it was not from the shrine it came from who told you someone called you and said there is a way we make money in Nigeria you cannot just make money like that let me tell you sincerely if it's money you want to make there is one man you say no 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 let me think about it what is what was happening to Eve is happening to you when Satan uses that man do you see that that was the same thing that happened with Jesus Satan came to Jesus directly that was the last time he would come directly the next time he used the emotion of Peter then he used Judas in any case he felt he got him who told you that you were naked have you participated with what you heard did you do something about what you heard because every word we hear does not profit us if we don't mix it with faith no matter what it is that you hear if you have not mixed it with faith the bible says it will not profit those who hear it so if satan says kill yourself it remains as a thought for as long as you don't act on it wow if you wake up from a dream and in that dream you see an accident and all of a sudden you allow fear and you start thinking that is satan speaking so this is how i would die you are receiving it you may not know you don't receive by your hands alone the principal way of receiving is your mind you only have with your hand you receive with your spirit you receive with your mind Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't eat? The first demonstration of irresponsibility as recorded in the Bible. Are you ready? And the man said, the woman, is that the answer? Adam, have you eaten of the tree? Yes or no? What was his answer? The woman. He's showing you this is the first expression of the weakness that is in humans that we are usually comfortable transferring blames it is not natural for men to take responsibility by men here is genderless humans Adam have you eaten of this the woman that you gave me to be with me look at this description not longer the woman I love not longer the one we strolled in the garden together with the woman that you gave me to be with me in other words it's not my fault if i were alone no way satan would not get me i know you are laughing but you understand what god is teaching us here the family i came from is why things are happening like that that's the same answer you are giving why are you not rising because we come from a family of idol worship that's not the answer i know you can laugh at eve but we are learning now that many of us have been making the same thing and for as long as your answer seeks to transfer blame salvation will be far from you are, are we learning now this is a powerful spiritual concept two men were hanging on the cross with jesus christ one of them the bible called them thieves and one of them was quarreling Jesus, paraphrasing, shame on you, we're on the cross, you're on the cross, you can't save us. The other one said, we are sinners, this man is righteous. Jesus looked at one and said, today, you will be with me in paradise. What happened to the other one? Now watch this. I'm showing you how Satan, how man transferred the dominion to Satan. Watch how it happened now. Every time you pass blame on anything you also give that thing authority over you it's a spiritual principle let me repeat myself again every time you pass blame on anyone or anything you give that thing authority over you blaming situations and circumstances for your life is giving them authority over you no matter how legitimate you think it is the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she did give me of the tree and i did eat 
he did not answer i did it alone he had to tie someone else to cushion his guilt and he said yes i ate but hold on hold on the woman that you gave me is the cause for it now are you seeing that on legal basis god could now talk to the woman because satan has handed over responsibility to her and the lord said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done sadly she made the same mistake and the woman said satan the serpent beguiled me and i did it what is this that you have done the serpent beguiled me and i did it verse 14 he goes to satan and the lord god said to the serpent because thou hast done this thou art caused above all cattle and above all beasts of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and thus shalt thou eat all the days of your life verse 15 i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel there's no time to now begin to teach you all these things. He says to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife. You see now. You heard the voice of your wife, and you have eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat cost is the ground the ground is anywhere you sow cost is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of your life 18 thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto you and thou shalt eat of the herb in the field 19 in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return to the ground for out of it was thou taken and dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return let's stop there what do we have to learn from this number one lesson number one understanding the operation of satan especially his deceptive nature which is his strongest point over the saints number one i told you that deception cannot happen until there is the awareness of the truth do you know what that means everything God tells you by speaking to you or by his word guard it carefully because somebody is coming there that adversary is coming to vet what God has told you when Satan comes to you his primary assignment is to find out what God said because everything God said represents where he's taking you to lesson number two are you ready now guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life guard your ear gate guard your eye gate because these are the principal channels through which satan speaks can i tell you this if you think satan will always appear to you and talk to you it may not always happen like that but he will use your ear gate he will use your eye gate because these are the principal gates to your mind. Very soon you understand what Paul was teaching in his Pauline epistle. Is God helping us tonight? Number three. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and understanding. It is not just faith towards God comes by hearing the word of God, but faith towards anything comes by hearing the word of that thing. Faith towards destruction comes by hearing the word that makes for destruction. Faith towards failure comes by hearing the word that leads to failure and hearing again until it crystallizes in your heart. Satan is a master of deception. He uses the word of God 
to shift you away from your zone of safety from your zone of power from your zone of defense but in the name of Jesus with this spiritual understanding someone is gaining momentum and is gaining power to shake off everything that is an arsenal of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ write this down very quickly levels of satanic influences very powerful truth you're about to learn there are three levels of satanic influences over the saints as revealed from scripture three levels principally number one are you ready number one is called witchcraft the first level of satanic influence over the saints is called witchcraft galatians chapter 3 please and verse 1 let's hurry up for sake of time galatians 3 verse 1 all foolish galatians he says who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes jesus had been seen evidently set forth crucified among you now please look up the bible's idea of witchcraft is not drinking blood and eating flesh those are just extended meanings the bible's idea of witchcraft is not going to a coven in the night and having a meeting i'm not negating those things but i'm telling you that the standard definition of witchcraft from the bible has nothing to do with any of these things witchcraft according to bible definition is anything that can cause you to err using the tool of deception that is witchcraft causing a man to err causing a man to go out of alignment using the tool of deception is the bible's definition of witchcraft the first way that satan influences men is through witchcraft that means he uses the tool of deception to cause you to err Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6 Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6 let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience notice every time there is witchcraft you see that there is deviation from the truth there is disobedience in it what is witchcraft I wrote here to cause you to think to act and to talk in error using the tool of deception what is witchcraft again to cause you to think to cause you to act and to cause you to talk in error using the tool of deception second peter chapter 2 we'll read from verse 1 and 2 second peter chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2 very quickly but there are false prophets also among the people even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies even denying the lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction last verse verse 2 and many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of this is the character of witchcraft the practice of witchcraft does not have to do with some crude african type activity even though there is an expression of it like that but principally engaging the tool of deception to cause you to think to act and to speak in ways that are inconsistent with god's ways is witchcraft so the first demonic influence that satan has over men if allowed is witchcraft number two are you ready the second is called manipulation and control of your mind 
manipulation and control of your mind please start that one because this is where even when you are saved i'm going to be answering the question whether the christians can be possessed or not manipulation and control of your mind this one is principally in the realm of the mind your mind containing your will your emotions and your intellect matthew chapter 16 from verse 22 and 23 matthew 16 22 and 23 remember the discussion between jesus and peter jesus was talking about his dying and the bible says peter took him who took him peter one of the chief disciples of jesus he took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not happen to you 23 but he turned he being jesus and said unto peter get thee behind me satan thou art an offense unto me for thou severest not the things that be of god and those that be of men you want to find the account that he said satan has desired to sift you go to luke 22 we'll read 31 and 32 synoptic account same message the lord said luke 22 31 and 32 the lord said simon simon behold satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat 32 but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen thy brethren satan came to manipulate the compassion like i've taught you of peter to stop jesus from dying jesus was talking about his death and to peter he did not know this was a man who it was not long after, i mean that he had said i know who thou art thou art the christ the son of the living god next moment jesus is telling him get thee behind me satan number three the third level of satanic influence the third level of satanic influence over the saints is called possession or over men really possession this talks of complete influence and control of your spirit mind and body possession complete influence and control of your spirit your mind and your body demons can use satan can use witchcraft next level manipulation and control of your mind third level complete possession influence and control of your spirit your mind your mental faculties and your body mark chapter 5 Mark chapter 5. And they came over to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Let's follow closely now. He's teaching us that it is possible for demons to completely possess a man. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tomb are you seeing the character of that man now and no man could bind him unusual power no not with chains verse 4 because that when he had often when he had been often bound with fetters and chains the chains had been plucked asunder by him can a normal man easily do that you see that now and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs doing what crying and cutting himself with stones this is the standard character of demonic possession that this man is hurting himself with stones and yet he cannot stop because his spirit his mental faculties and sadly his body is under total control and influence of such a spirit when jesus saw when he saw jesus afar off we're about to learn some lessons now he ran and worshiped him i ask you again does satan know that jesus is lord
he's about to negotiate a deal because when he saw Jesus he knew that means every time demons see people who understand their authority they know he saw Jesus and he knew and he came and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee Jesus thou son of the most high look at that kind of intelligence I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not do you know what this means I use the father's authority that you submit to to plead with you I know you are obedient to the father and remember he is kind and he's loving don't torment us look at Satan for Jesus had said come out of the man thou unclean spirit now I love Jesus and he asked him what is your name and the man answered saying my name is Legion for we are many and he besought him much that he should not send them away from the country are you seeing now territorial construct of these spirits that means okay since we are going to leave the man it looks like that negotiation is not working please do us a favor can you command that we just come out of him and look for someone within the territory because based on our structure this is our territory verse 11 now there was nigh unto the mountain a great herd of swine feeding And the devils besought him and said, I will teach you why demons want bodies. Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Do you know what lesson? Hold on, please go back. Go back. Go back to verse 12. How many of you know that Gadara had so many human beings? And yet the demons are begging. It took us a long time to prepare this body to host us. I thought they would live and just enter anybody. Satan does not have that kind of power to just enter anyhow. It takes a lot. There are processes. He's telling them that even though there are men, as it is right now, the urgency of wanting a body, when are we going to meet a man, deceive him, manipulate him until we gain entrance? Let us go to peaks. Why will Satan have men scattered in the in the Decapolis and yet look for one man because there are rules of engagement I told you even Jesus knocks to enter your life so when you see it look like Satan can just get into any life anyhow it is a lie from Adam and Eve and from this madman the demons are pleading we want to leave but there are rules of engagement we are not just going to enter anybody and remember these guys that is afraid of entering are not born again because jesus had not died and yet he still could not enter them send us to peaks that we may enter into them 13 and forthwith jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep. Can you see that exactly what was happening to the man before was now happening to the pigs? So it was not the bodies, it was the influences that was behind it. Are we together now? The Bible says they ran down to a steep place. There were about 2,000. Look at how that man was suffering. What came out from him entered 2,000 pigs. And all of them could not control themselves. Yet one man was carrying that. Imagine the pain that that man was going through. Let's finish. We're reading to 16. 14 now. Verse 14. And they that fed the swine, and they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what was that that was done verse 15 and when they come to jesus they see that the man who was possessed with the devil and had a legion they saw him sitting and clothed and in his right mind we discussed that last week that immediately after the deliverance you thought the man would go away but the next thing that happened after deliverance was that he was with jesus he did not leave Jesus. 
Next week, we'll be looking at the three levels of deliverance. That number one, the spirit influences were cast. Number two, he was with Jesus. He remained with Jesus and he sat down there and his remaining with Jesus was doing something to his mind. His right mind and they were afraid. Last verse. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. Now, can a Christian be possessed with demons? The answer is no. A Christian cannot be possessed with demons. The reason is because of the very character of the administration of eternal life. That eternal life demands that you are joined to Christ. And the Bible says, he that is joined to Christ is one spirit. But this is the balance. Just because a Christian cannot be possessed does not mean Satan does not have an activity that a believer can be a victim of. The first two that I listed, witchcraft and manipulation and control, it does not matter how born again that believer is. The cure for witchcraft and the cure for manipulation and control is not just being born again. It's putting on the whole armor of God. I will teach you that one. Are you seeing now? There are many, many believers that are saved and yet will be victims of this. Why? Ephesians 4.18 having their understanding darkened not having their salvation lost having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart a christian cannot be possessed but he can be demonized manipulated and controlled at the solical realm absolutely here is where we need to balance in the body of christ and most of you know that i love the body of christ i'm sent to the body of christ but let us not give the devil the authorization to prey on our ignorance satan came to jesus holy jesus righteous jesus blameless jesus he came to him spoke with him it took it is written it did not take Jesus being the word to be saved. It didn't take Jesus being born of the word to be saved from that deception. It took him having knowledge and replying back, it is written and get thee behind me. Two things that saved Jesus. It is written and get thee behind me. Understanding of scripture and understanding of authority. Are we learning now? So the whole idea that just because you are saved automatically Satan has nothing to do with your life it's a lie it's not true I can tell you by the authority of Scripture it is not true the disciples the Apostles they continue to tell you how that Satan would come and attempt to challenge them challenge their minds challenge their body and they continue to stand with the operation of the Word of God when Jesus entered the temple and preached and rebuked spirits, the people did not show any evidence that they had any spirit at work in them. It was when he gave the command. Hallelujah. Three levels of satanic influences. Witchcraft through deception, manipulation and control largely in the realm of your mind and then complete possession influencing your spirit influencing your mind and influencing your body now having put down all of these things in our discussion what then is deliverance what is deliverance exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 what exactly is deliverance and the Lord said, Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Please read verse 8 with me. Ready? Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, 
and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites I am come down to deliver them take note to take them out and to bring them in to take them out and to bring them in scripture number two Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14 Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins recall that i've taught you here that there are two dimensions when it has to do with the dealings of god and man number one there is the prophetic dimension realities from god's standpoint that every time god speaks he speaks from a realm that is finished and number two there is the experiential manifestation of that which god intended happening in time two dimensions when you read the bible you will see god establish certain things for instance none shall say in zion i am sick for instance we've been delivered not we have been not there is deliverance going on we are delivered it is our assignment to make that which was spoken become manifest are we together now you have to understand this write this down please what is deliverance I was going through the notes that I made last time I was doing mystery of deliverance and I saw this definition I worked on it a bit but it's a powerful definition listen carefully generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking this is just a general idea the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage from danger and from evil deliverance also means salvation deliverance also means salvation generally speaking deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger evil let me define deliverance proper now deliverance i wrote here is the scriptural strategy deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing i will take it very slowly because i don't want you to miss anything here as long as it is obtain grace to write it there is victory in that sentence are we together deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ let me stop there so you write deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan and demonic forces come on over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ 
over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. If we are together, say amen. amen. Now listen as I read it without breaking. You've been writing. I want you to hear now. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially manifesting establishing the victory and authority of jesus christ over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer write this down deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare please don't be tired of writing deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ, deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing, underline establishing, and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Second Corinthians 2 and verse 4. That means deliverance, and then it extends to spiritual warfare. For the believer in Christ, our idea of deliverance is not fighting for victory. It's engaging the systems that establish and manifest the victory that has been wrought in Christ. Do you understand this now? It's important to get this definition. It will mean the world as far as challenging and contending for that which Christ has given you is concerned. Because there are ideas about deliverance that connotes fighting Satan. So you are not sure whether you win. You just fight and watch as it happens. That is not scriptural. That will be an endless struggle in ignorance until you are defeated. For the believer, our idea of deliverance is engaging the systems and the forces of victory given to us in Christ to establish and manifest our victory in Christ over Satan, over demons, principalities, and powers. 2 Corinthians 2.14 2 Corinthians 2.14 1.4 do we have that? Now, thanks be unto God. Let's read together. Now, thanks be unto God, which causeth us to triumph, where? In Christ. Not by our ability, in Christ. And make it manifest, that's right, the savor of this knowledge by us in every place. Now, thanks be to God. Who causes us to triumph? We triumph. But there is one who causes us to triumph. The Bible calls him Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Let's read together again. Ready? One to read. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Shout amen. But thanks be to God, which giveth us, giveth us the victory. So when it has to do with deliverance, your concern is not fighting Satan. Your concern is not fighting demons. Your concern is not fighting causes. Your concern is not fighting yokes. Are we together? Your concern is taking advantage of what we call the weapons of victory that have been given to you in Christ. We are going to deal with the weapons. What are they? Because the Bible says to put the whole armor of God. But there are weapons of victory that have been given to us. Weapon number one, the power of the word. Weapon number two, the power of the blood. Weapon number three, the power of the name. Given to us. Hmm. The power 
of the word will deal with, with that when we go into administering deliverance the power of the word the power of the blood the power of the name all of them are not doing the same thing no deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer is not is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it we are not fighting for it we have it already but now our assignment is to know how to engage it to make it manifest the bible says right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but jesus had to come physically and engage the tool of being a man walking in the earth walk dying shedding his blood going to hades resurrecting to make that which was finished become manifest today hallelujah are you learning now before we pray let me end tonight's discussion by teaching you something very powerful access points access points hmm. that means by what access points does satan and demons get into the life of the believer or find a place in their minds their bodies listen by the privilege of god's grace i have studied my bible from cover to cover and by the privilege of god's grace i've had the honor of listening to people who really understand this subject i have studied my bible and i found out as complicated as satan causes yokes altars foundations ancestry and all these ills are there are only three access points that satan has to man and even the believer are you ready now i may not go into in depth of detail we'll leave that one for next week because i want us to take the remaining time and pray for all the sessions we have some time to pray because there are people who as you are hearing now god is granting you that light and you are seeing that the strength of satan is in my cooperating with him through ignorance through through deception he will roar like a lion and act as if he will eat you out when he does ask him why he did not enter Eve and adam immediately ask him why when the spirits left the madman they did not enter another man he should give you the explanation where did he keep his power that he could not simply pick any man just because you come from a village where there is that cause does not mean you can allow satan to just manipulate you like that now listen carefully you are about to learn something that is very very powerful access points please write Are you ready there are three biblical access points number one covenants aha uh -huh. covenants write it down the first access point that gives satan legitimate access to the lives of men sadly including believers covenants please just write it number two ignorance ignorance number three disobedience these are the three biblical access points and the only access points that satan has if you ever find satan manipulating a life a destiny 
a region, a family. I don't care how long, I don't care how great. Believe me when I tell you, it is one or more or all of these access points. Number one, covenants. Number two, disobedience, ignorance. Number three, of the three, the most effective for Satan is covenants. Do you know why? Because covenants have a transgenerational implication. Covenants, ignorance, and disobedience are all interrelated. But covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis. Let me touch on covenants. The idea of covenant was not invented by Satan. The idea of covenant was invented by God. It was God's own intelligence to manage the inconsistencies and to manage the emotional frailty of man. Listen carefully. God gave man a will and the fallen man by his design is frail with several emotional vacillations and if man is going to partner with God sustainably, there has to be a way of binding man that is greater than his emotions. Covenants. Because covenant is a non-emotional activity. That means you can't just decide to change it. Anything God wants to do with man that he wants to take seriously, he will tie a covenant to it. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips. You know, believers play with the idea of covenants and you will see that everything God takes seriously, marriage, he took it seriously and he tied it to a covenant. Do you know why? Because he knows under normal circumstances, the couple can run away by the next day. So he put covenant, a non-emotional binding, so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel. There is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations. Salvation is a covenant. Whosoever believes him, if not, there are people who can be so bad, they don't deserve to be saved. However, because it is a covenant, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, it does not matter who that person is, provided you confess with your heart. Let me tell you, if you are given the keys for salvation, there are people whose level of evil, if you see them, you will tell them, don't near this altar. However, because it is a covenant, whosoever believes in him, even if you are Saul, even if you are Paul, whosoever, the only personalities that salvation does not capture are fallen angels. Salvation is not for angels and non-human spirits. I'll be teaching you the rules of engagement. That is why Satan and demons cannot be forgiven. Mm -mm. Salvation is for men. Salvation is for men. The benefit of salvation extends to creation, but animals don't have to give their life to Jesus. They are already under the dominion of man. The same way when Eve ate, nothing happened till Adam ate. That is the same way. What animals and plants do does not matter, provided the man in control is still in touch with God. Are you seeing that now? Animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man because man had willfully given his authority to Satan. I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you. Covenants are very powerful. Everything that God wants to do with you, if he wants to take you seriously, there will be covenants. Because by the frail nature of men, that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships, non-emotional. Is that true? When you get a job, watch this. It may not be called covenant, but there is something given to you called an employment letter. Is that true? It clearly spells the terms. 
you are going to be given 500,000 every month. They calculate it for you per annum. You have 30 days, one month leave. You can spread it three or four times. They give you all of those things and then you sign. The signing is a declaration of your consent that if for any reason I violate these terms, is that true? The company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi and that if I comply with these terms, I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting covenants. Say covenants. That is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers, he did not suggest. He called them and said, you want me to help you? Let us have an agreement. Now you see, an altar is simply a system of authorization. Again, we'll discuss that next week. When we talk about altars, an altar, because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven, in fact, God himself sits, his throne is an altar. A system of authorization. Let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne he literally sits on an altar. An altar is a system of authorization. The assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding, even when those who initiated it are no more. An altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants. There is no true covenant until there is an altar and that altar is built and ratified with blood so that even though our forefathers have long gone even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone but the altars that represent the witness are still there so after 50 years 100 years the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region and every time you want to accuse them, they go back and make reference. The altar remains a witness. I am not an illegal occupant in this land. I was willfully invited and your forefathers and you were in the loins of your forefathers. That is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms, these are covenant type things too. How did you get into Christ? It was by the mystery of that covenant drink this this is my blood of the new covenant do this as often as you can in remembrance of me are we together now watch this when the angel of death was going to pass over egypt remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness whether you are a jew or not just find a house the house did not have emotions provided there is blood on the house whoever is in it you are saved but when you are in that house even though you are saved there will still be a difference if you wanted to become a jew there you have to submit yourself to circumcision however as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned the angel does not see men he's looking for the blood you know why because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody and like we say in theology, when he came to some homes, he found them already dead. Because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened. So the angel of death will pass. As far as the angel of death is concerned, he killed everybody. It's only that when he came, some people, someone had helped him kill the ones in the house. So he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there. Listen. That is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region this spirit when you see them have no fear through ancestry through bloodline or through their personal activities they have brought themselves to that point that is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access, you do not cast it in Jesus' name. It is the blood that speaks. There are rules of engagement. Look at me. As powerful as God is, he did not cast sin out of man. You would think God would look at man and say, I am God, I am creator. Man, be free. No. When he gave Satan the authority 
it was willful and it would take the blood this is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done and it is not done because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble go and read the history of many lands you will hear that they buried human beings they buried people alive do you know the power of blood and the power human beings were the zenith of God's creation and you will not just carelessly say I don't believe I force my mind to think right you are joking it takes the blood and you see in the realm of the spirit blood is currency and from the physical world you know that there is dollars there's naira there's pounds there's whatever it is I don't know how much one dollar is to naira now don't say it <laughs> hallelujah but one thing we know is that it's not one naira to one dollar are we together because the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. Every blood speaks something. But with respect to what we want, the only blood that can speak to the degree. One million naira can pay for rent of a certain kind of house. But you can look at a certain house and you know that as wonderful as one million is, it can't go beyond it you will need something else the blood of abel the blood of bulls the blood of goats they could do something in the realm of the spirit but when jesus came listen please don't mix next next week as i teach you the power of the blood the blood is powerful everybody's blood including your own You will be learning that the blood is one of the weaknesses on earth. Do you know what that means? There are three things that have lived as long as the earth. One of it is water. This water you are drinking, you are not the first person to drink it because it recycles. You don't know who else has taken it before it got to you. That's why the Bible says water is a witness. It has lived long on earth, recycling itself and blood nobody invents his own blood it is past that means the blood in everybody is typically older than that person except you are denying biology is that true i'm not a doctor but let's be intelligent for god's sake it took that blood to bring you so the blood cannot be as the same age with you There are three witnesses in heaven the spirit the word and the father the spirit and the word and these three agree and on earth there are three witnesses the spirit the water and the blood Many of us have found ourselves in situations today. Listen to me, we're wrapping up. You have prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted. And as soon as you are done with the fasting, the same thing you prayed about happens casually. As if you were wasting your time in all that fasting. You were praying to stop some spirit that is coming to molest you. And just when you finish the last fast, that sleep you just took a little siesta and that spirit comes again to rubbish your fasting because there are rules of engagement there are people who will not listen to me the fact that you are not listening to me is a sign that there is an attack already that is a symptom of an attack listen i will always tell you i'm not just speaking from scripture alone I'm speaking from experience there are things in your life that will never grow there are things in your life that will never thrive until you understand the rules of engagement 
for everybody seated here under the sound of my voice listen to me who is trusting God for some kind of liberty for yourself for your children or for your family please hear me there are only three access points as complicated as your life may seem don't let the devil confuse you it looks like there are one million doorways it's a lie there are only three access points one covenants two ignorance three disobedience that's it so you know what to close to be free and ye shall know the truth when you know the truth when both the deceived and the deceiver know the truth deception dies the strength of deception is that the deceiver knows the truth and that's what he uses as an advantage when the ignorance of the deceived cooperates with the knowledge of the deceiver deception happens the cure is not necessarily driving the deceiver alone but that the deceived must also come to the point of knowledge when you come to that point of knowledge now the deceiver does not have an advantage over you if a visitor comes to meet two of us or someone comes to meet you and your say your sibling and he gives 10 10 000 and he says give everybody if you didn't hear it or you didn't know that there is a share for you there the person can even give you 1,000 and you can kneel down. He can even say, go away. This was for me. Is that true? But if for any reason you find a way, when the person wants to solve that problem, he will come again. And he will say, let me repeat what I said. I said, this 10,000 is for everybody. When you hear it, that contention dies. Because immediately now you know the truth. And based on the truth you know, you can say my 10,000, no stories. Hand it over to me now in peace. Your boldness is based on the quality of the information and the persuasion that you have. When you rebuke the devil and speak and then you go back and you are afraid and say, ah, did I talk too much? Oh God, forgive me. It's because you are not sure of something that generates the power and the courage. Listen, I have held many charms with my bare hands. I have prayed for many people. This is what I do. I have seen many spirits. I have met many demon spirits. I can tell you the strength of Satan is in his power to deceive. The strength of Satan is in the continual ignorance of the saints. The strength of Satan is in the inaccurate construction of our spiritual understanding for John 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not when you go to your village you may, most likely may see shrines you most likely may see a lot of demonic things around just toying it with ignorance will cause you casualties but when light comes I don't know how true it is but I hear is the story of Archbishop Benson Idahosa when I think someone dropped a dead chicken or something of that sort and they saw the chicken it was supposed to be a ritual for them to die and they carried the chicken and said we can't waste this chicken like this and they boiled it and ate it in peace and they went and slept and they woke up because you see before satan attacks he finds out what god told you and he finds out whether you know and believe what god told you the trouble is if you believe what god told you and you know how to make it happen and remain in your life now you have defeated him totally one last scripture and then we'll begin our prayer. Isaiah 49. 
Isaiah 49. Let's start from verse, that should be 24. Isaiah 49, 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? It's a question. Or the lawful captive? You know who a lawful captive is? A lawful captive is one who was bought from a slave master. Because those days they used to sell human beings just like chickens. And so if I'm a slave and my slave master comes and exchange money with someone and they transfer me, I am still a slave. I am a lawful captive. Number two, if a king leads a delegation to go for war and they conquer the people and kill the king, all the people within that land become slaves. Is that true? They are called lawful captives. For instance, Israel in Egypt. They were lawful captives. That's why they could whip them to build those pyramids and all those Egyptian buildings. But he's saying, is there a possibility that when the mighty has taken a prey or the lawful captive, can he be delivered? Let the Lord answer it by himself. But thus saith the Lord, hmm. even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee and I will save your children. There is a cure to demonic covenants. There is a cure to yokes and spells and hexes and all of these things. Please hear me. There is a cure. Hmm. When Jesus Christ hung on that cross, it was not just the body of a 33-year-old man hanging. His blood was touching the earth. That old earth that is one of the witnesses. When he drained his blood, and according to the revelation of Paul to the church in he the Hebrew church, when he went as a high priest and a lamb also, he poured his blood once and for all. And he returned back to the earth and said, all hail. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Listen, John said, I wept for no man. That means men are doomed. I wept for no man is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder said, weep not weep not oh crying comes to an end weep not weep not for behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david has prevailed the word prevailed means qualified to open the book and lose the seven seals verse six and i beheld and in the midst of the throne were four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though he had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes the lamb that was slain now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise our we raise our for you are God and God alone. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now unto the Lamb upon the throne we raise the sound. For you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, can I tell you this? The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Listen, 
Listen. There are people today who under normal circumstances you should not rise. I don't know what my forefathers did. I don't know what they did. In, in dating, there is what we call AD and BC. Is that true? The middle man was Jesus Christ. I may not know what happened before he came, but the good news is that he came. He came. He came. Please listen to me. Your destiny depends on what you are hearing. Remember everything I taught you today. Satan is not looking for your money. He's not looking for your fruitfulness. He's not looking for your job. He's not looking for your health. He's looking for loyalty. Transgenerational loyalty. And that the structure of his operation largely is deception. He manipulates strategies that fights the word of God. The principal raw material for his fashioning his attack against you is the word of God. It's amazing that it's not only God and believers that use the word of God. Satan uses it too. It is his principal raw material. Hear me? You hear of young men going to go and do money ritual. You will never see Satan following them. Yet he's the one moving them. Deception. Listen. And when they go and do the money ritual, you will see that there are physical evidences. Money comes, so they'll go and do it again. Because they don't know what else. Satan will never tell you the complete story. And he will never tell you the whole truth. He will doctor the truth to present it in a way that provides an advantage for him. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. All truth. Satan has deceived pastors. Satan has deceived churches. For instance, the understanding and the theology that you should just concentrate on serving God in your spiritual life and don't worry whether you are doing well or not, whether your finances are doing well. It looks like a sincere message, but that is a destructive message. Many sincere people have received it, and today they cannot pay the school fees of their children, and today they are in trouble. And then for others who come and fall into this deception, everything is about prosperity and prosperity and money and making it and doing all of this and they forget about strengthening believers to be strong, no knowledge of the truth, no evangelism, no nothing. And people become carnally minded. All they want is competition of clothes and cars and all of that. That is another kind of error. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will bring the whole truth and create a balanced, structured growth. Another kind of lie that Satan is so mighty, you don't know what he can do. Be afraid and be watching. Always be in a position of warfare. And by warfare, they mean just be ready to fight. That is not scriptural. It may be sincere. It may be well-meaning. By well-meaning people, but believe me from the authority of God's word, that is not the position of the believer. We have been given a position of victory, victory, victory in Christ. Then the ones who say, ignore everything, don't worry about anything, provided you are happy, you are fine. And the devil likes such sermons. And he continues to use subtlety to wreak havoc over people. Satan will join the heads of a husband and wife and stand behind and watch them in ignorance, blaming one another for food, for car, for house rent, and it is none of those issues. The adversary. Join the heads of people and go back and watch with joy. Now you are getting intelligence that everything that happens in your life among the many factors you put together to interpret the happenings in your life, do not forget to tap into the wisdom of the Spirit. Be able to discern his deception. The way my husband has been behaving in the last two weeks, something is wrong. 
you don't just say i will show you that i'm a wife you think you just married a foolish person when you think like that he has also deceived you to join your head together indeed one person has to create the advantage in that equation and in that case let it be you and you go and begin to pray now i will teach you by next week when we are dealing with administering deliverance because most believers say pray but most believers don't know what they are saying this idea of praying does not just mean talk to god mm -mm. god is not the only person you talk to in prayer there are times you talk to the situation there are times you talk to the devil there are times that you talk to you engage and call into remembrance the integrity of god all of it is called prayer so don't say i prayed we need to vet what you did based on the situation you are trying to handle just because you were given injection does not mean you were given the right treatment we have to look at what was wrong with you and who gave you the injection and what you were given and we can say no you have typhoid this is not the treatment for typhoid are we together so just because you feel the pain of injection you can say, I received the injection, I should be well. That's what is frustrating many believers. Because they will tell you, Apostle, I have prayed. You don't, look, nobody prays like me. I agree. Let's hear what you have been saying. Let's understand to who you have been talking. First, let me know what you want to achieve. You will find out that many believers have just been wasting their time. When they say pray, they just, they just mean talk. Talk loud. Add it again to God. Round up. You have prayed. You will never get victory that way. It takes intelligence to understand what to say. There were times Jesus spoke to the Father. Father, I thank thee because you hear me. And he turned and said, open the tomb. Lazarus, come forth. Notice the protocol. When he was about to break bread, he gave thanks and said, go and share it. Is that how you multiply? He never said multiply this bread. He just said give, give thanks. Go and multiply it. When he stood before demons, he did not talk to the father. He rebuked the spirits. Go. When he sent the disciples, he said in my name, when you find the spirits, use my office. My name does not mean J-E-S-U-S. -S. My name means the consciousness of my office. I have given you a position use it when you see satan and they return back with shock and they said even do you know the most outstanding miracle every miracle jesus did had been done in the old testament the only miracle that had not been done in the new testament was a miracle of deliverance never had a man used authority and a name to remove any demon you don't find that in the old testament you find them playing strings and the demons living are we together now but you do not find anybody using a name to remove any demon it's not done any in fact what they do is they will kill the person they stone the person who is demonized when he dies they now frustrate the demon because like you have learned it takes a long time for demons to find bodies they don't just find any body they can find any mind but they don't just find any body bodies are scarce bodies are scarce that's why a legion will live in one body because bodies are scarce are you ready to pray i made up my mind that i will open up the truth to god's people to really understand with balance and with understanding don't just say i'm born again and everything is over it may not be very accurate you need to be instructed and to have superior spiritual understanding for now you understand what deliverance is that it has to do with establishing and manifesting your victory not fighting for it hallelujah you have won the victory Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won it all for me. 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You have won it all. Sing it one more time, and then we we'll pray. Hallelujah. points prayer point number one i taught you the three levels of demonic influences you are going to pray and immune yourself by knowledge and declare that in the name of jesus the son of the living god for you and for your loved ones whether it is witchcraft through deception whether it is manipulation and control of your mental faculties whether it's possession of your unsaved loved ones declare in the name of jesus that you are free completely from this open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray Open your mouth and begin to pray. Shapekatos koto parakata, embrekete parakos katila kataba, ebrakatos kani parusiata. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Shaprande ke pakatos kalika pras, e prote ke parakatos ke tele makata. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Please give us verse five. Second Corinthians ten, and let's start from verse four. Second Corinthians ten four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds you know what a stronghold is a stronghold is a negative mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the victim remains in that thought pattern they are called strongholds when a wrong mindset now has the fortification of demon spirits it is that state that makes the individual the word of god of non effect casting down imaginations from the word imagery and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity help me every thought this is the realm of warfare your mind even though satan knows that you have the victory he knows that your mind is part of the participatory systems that will make victory manifest so he will hijack your thinking are you ready to pray lay your hands on your head representing your mind and i want you to begin to prophesy i have a sound mind in the name of jesus a mindset that is word based word compliant word based word compliant someone is praying lay your hands on your head prophetically over your children someone is praying shake it take a pack of those go to break it up shkati brand every wrong thinking every wrong teaching every wrong understanding cultural demonic sociological that is authorizing darkness to take advantage of me in the name of jesus 
I cast down every imagination pray sustain faulty thinking patterns that came from God